Hey yo folks, I hope you had a very Merry Christmas, or whatever you celebrate, and a fantastic New Year. Now that the holidays are over, it's back to business as usual. I took the time that I needed to hit 60 and get started with raiding, but that does mean we have some episodes to catch up on. Let's get started by wrapping up our questing in the burning steps. Enjoy. But first, we've got to stop by Red Ridge and Stormwind because we do have quests in the Anixia chain to turn in. And, well, I've got to walk places, and if I have to, then you have to too. We're going to talk to Magistrate Solomon here about the true masters who... And, and he's, uh, well, he, he's reasonably concerned. So we're going to go talk to Bolvar Four Dragon about it, and you might recognize his name from Wrath of the Lich King. He is kind of a badass. Here he is, and he says... Dragons? Impossible. Not so, my friend. And now he's going to ask us to talk to Lady Katrona Prester over here, who is in fact Onyxia. I guess they like to meddle in the affairs of Stormwind for some reason. Probably to weaken us as a faction. And look at her insulting us. I'm going to look forward to killing you, lady. But of course my character has to apologize, because that's, that's how my character is. My character says a lot of dumb things. We'll see more of that a little bit later on. So we're going to thank her for her time, which uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not in the least bit genuine about it. Now we've got the next quest, we can go ahead, back to Redridge, talk to Solomon again, and here's that note by the way that we received from Bolvar, Bolvar for Dragon, which basically says, hey, there's nothing we can do, uh, good luck, bye. Not in the least bit helpful, but neither are we, so we're just going to go right on back to Marshall Maxwell in the Burning Steps. He's going to ask us for some info about uh, some fellow Windsor who is uh, who's locked up in the, in the Blackrock Depths. You thought you were the first, he asks. Yep. Stormwind is full of lazy boys, but we are not so lazy. We're gonna get some quests done out here. We're actually going to do some questing. First, we gotta. Well, we don't really need to pick anything up over here. We just gotta touch the artifacts there. And luckily, if one of us touches them, then we both get credit. So that's pretty nice. There are some Dark Iron Dwarves along the way, but they won't really pose that much of a threat. We'll just uh, keep on pew pewing at them until they die. And that's usually how it goes, isn't it? They go down pretty easily, but they do hit pretty hard, too. So the idea is to finish them quickly with our powerful hunter burst to damage and move on to the artifacts that we need to touch. And by the way, touching them does yield some really neat quest text in the chat box there. We get these mysterious whispers from very, very vague ghosts. So they messed up because this this is messed up right here. And well, we're 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 just gonna have to clean up the mess because it it does concern us too. It concerns all of us because they did something with Ragnaros. Things are bad. Things are really bad. Except where these War Reavers are concerned, because even though they are big and scary, and they do wind up their attacks, if you keep away from them, uh, they're, they're not too bad. They go down pretty easily. Volchan, they are not. We, we've just taken on three of them, and we're about to go back to the Dwarves. The Dwarves, who, uh, well, this one is ranged. The, the Dark Iron Agents. They'll, they'll pew pew at me, and I do not care. I do not give a single heck. Because we hit far, far harder than he does. This one is a fiery boy, but he does have a torch, so he does have to swing at us in melee, in addition to casting fireballs. We are going to ignore him, though, because he's small and not at all scary. That's not what she said. But now that we've gotten the artifact and successfully ignored him, we can go ahead and pew-pew from over here. These uh, Thorason spies are the only really nasty melee threat in this entire area, and... I mean, just look at this fellow. He's swinging away at me with his daggers, or stabbing away, I suppose. He's a happy stabby boy with poisons. He's like a mini rogue, except uh, without the suns. Without the suns. I am not going to use a lily root. I have to turn an aspect of the monkey, which ensures that he cannot hit me. 
and counterattack, which really ensures that he cannot hit me. Bye bye. We've got a couple more Reavers on us, but we're just about done with this here quest. Just about. We only have a few more of those artifacts to, to poke and be whispered by. Or by, by the neighboring ghosts, which are very, very determined to be spooky. Oh, hello there. And, well, uh, th there we go. <laughs> that's, uh, that's some pretty bad timing. Nice hand of rag, though. I do, I do think he should use it against uh, higher level targets, though. Anyway, now that we're left alone again, we have completed our quest, and now it's time to find the ogre head on a stick, which is not here, which is here. It, it's here. Here in the southern area full of orcs, not the northern area. We got some caster, we got some melee, and we will kill them both with the help of our warrior friend. This one can go ahead and trail behind us all he likes. Our warrior friend will hop on him and take care of him for us, and in the meantime, we will seek out our new target. Because that's what you do after you pull something. You seek out a new target to kill. It's like I always say, playing a hunter is about not giving a single heck. If you pull something, you look for something else to pull. Rinse and repeat until you die. Now, those two were in a fantastic position to multi-shot, and they are in the same position, the, the, the identically ideal position once again, right here for the dead zone shot. We are hamstrung, but a little feigned death can leave that orc right there. We can get back out to the minimum range. Very comfortable right here. And pew pew away before uh, seeking out yet another target. Wherever it might be. This one's a caster, so those are, those are very nice and squishy. As you can see, it went down in only a few crits, as things normally do, but casters even more so than the melee. There's another melee mob over here, so I'm gonna have Rapture go ahead of me and... Oh, get it, Rapture. Get it. Thank you. He did the growl, and... These two were not actually in the right range for the multi-shot there. I just barely missed the two-target multi-shot. Seems that there's a friendly passing by. I was paying attention to my humanoid tracker there. Cause you, you gotta pay attention to the humanoid tracker. If you see someone approaching you, you gotta be ready to check it. Are they friendly or are they hostile? Or are they red but not attacking? In which case, I have no idea what they are. Our warrior friend has that other one on him and he's chasing the one on me. So I'm trying to back up to get the dead zone shot off but I did not have luck until just then. We've got our feigned death up still, so we can use it if we take aggro once again. But since we don't have it, we'll keep pew pewing away. Our friend is looking kind of low, but he'll survive this. And we can move on to the big red ogre boy. The tall but not very tough ogre. Who needs to die for our quest? Which is, uh, well it's going to be ogre head on a stick equals party. But that's a story for later. For now, we just have to keep uh, keep on grinding these here Blackrock Orcs because they drop these metals that we need. We can keep trailing this one behind us. We have very firm aggro thanks to our aim shot crit. Pain death is available if we need it. I'm just going to scatter and turn right here. Um, I consider pulling the, the other target in there, but it's not an orc, so it's not our concern. The orcs are the ones that drop the metals that we need. The 50, yep. Metals. And you know, uh, do you guys remember this place? This is yet another area where I did a lot of stuff with an old tutorial. The, the old tutorial was uh, the Hunter's Toolkit, where we talked about our various different abilities and uh, what to do with them. Good times, good times. And these, these ogres are equally weak now to our superior technique as they as they were back then we've, we've got to kill this warg in here in order to get to the orc at the top rapture can go fetch it for us a little bit early and ah there we go this uh, this warg is in a terrible spot where he's 
almost dead zoned completely on me. And, uh, no, not again. Um, I mean, I could pull Rapture out right here, but we've got the spot right here. So all is well. All is well, we'll get our Rapture Strike parried and then go move on towards this the stables over here. If you are a warrior and you're you're in a tight space like that with a hunter, just make sure that you pull it to, I don't know, somewhere where the hunter can pew pew a little bit more easily. Not that it was a problem, it just, uh, it, it would make things a little bit more convenient. These ogres are nice and, or sorry, these orcs are nice and out in the open. So, yeah, I'm dazed and I'm hamstrung. So I guess the days didn't really matter, huh? Looks like my friend is fighting another orc over there, so I'll send Rapture and scatter and follow along. He's quite low in HP, so he should be slower than usual. Yeah, look at him limp after us. A little rank with Arcane Shot just to keep him on us until our warrior friend can go ahead and charge right in and finish him off. Now uh, we're onto some casters, and these three casters are about to get a very healthy dose of Serpent Sting. And I'm getting a very unhealthy dose of uh, Shadow Bolts right now. But the skull has already gone down, and Rapture has that one quite firmly, so we are A-OK. -okay. Our warrior friend can be expected to have that one. My multi-shot just crit, so it took aggro from Rapture and RIP. Uh, I should learn not to cut it so close. You'd think I'd have learned not to cut it so close after all that I've been through, but I like to live on the edge. I like to, to be very, very risky for no particular reason other than to make it harder on myself. Now, um, there are only two casters here, so we'll be okay. But our friend is in the red, so I'm going to scatter that one and bolt in his direction in order to help out. It turns out that he's okay after all, though. But we, we now have this, this caster trailing on us. I'm going to pop out and attack now, now that he's within range of our warrior friend to go ahead and charge right in. But uh, I, I can finish it off on my own, actually. I did take quite a bit of damage there, but all is well. I have bandaged myself up. I have put a band-aid on the boo-boo, and that made it all better. We're very lucky that these orcs drop so many medallions because if we had to actually grind out 50 of them, that would be uh, that would be uh, quite tiresome. But no, it, it may only feel that way. It may only feel that we've killed so many orcs, but we actually haven't. It, we we would have to have killed much much more. You know that quest in Desolus where you have to kill Centaur in order to get the rep is exactly, uh, you need to kill exactly 50. Speaking of 50, there we go. Now it's back to Flamecrest to uh, to pick up the, uh, a couple more quests and also listen to Ragged John's story. And this is actually kind of funny, so I'm going to read it. We're going to do some, some story time with Rizaya. Check this one out. What you be wanting? <laughs> Official business, John. I need some information about Marshall Windsor. Tell me about the last time you saw him. Windsor was particularly ornery that day. And believe me, for Windsor, that's a monumental accomplishment. He kept telling me that something feels off. Well, he wasn't kidding. We were in the middle of Blackrock Mountain when the filthy animals attacked. I'm talking about the orcs, of course. Pay attention, will ya? All you could hear were grunts and the clang of the steel as they rushed us. So what did he do? Me versus 50 orcs? I'm no fool, Nil. My poppy always told me, discrediting is the better part of a cracker, or something, and I, I knew what that meant. Start making sense, Dwarf. I don't want to have anything to do with your cracker, your poppy, or any sort of discrediting. Alright, alright. Anyhow, so I sort of slipped into the shadows. I didn't sit too well with Windsor, seeing as how he was already extra cranky. Well, he started spinning old Ironfo around and screaming like a madman at the orcs. Ironfo? Yep, you never heard of Ironfo, the legendary orc slaying hammer. Yep, yep, that was all Windsor's hammer. He told me that Frank Lorne Forge Ride himself made that hammer for his great great grandpappy, the Frank Lorne Forge Ride, the dark iron responsible for stone wrought, argumented building stuff. 
He also said that the hammer had a twin that Franklorn kept for himself. I think he called it Iron Fell or something. Interesting. Uh, continue, John. So where was I? Oh yeah. So the orcs rushed Windsor, and Windsor, well, he didn't move an inch. He stood tall as they charged him, ten at a time. And all I could see was the glow for my info and a lot of blood. This went on for hours, maybe days, I don't remember. Anyhow, finally it stopped. So that's how Windsor died. Died? Are you cracked, Nilf? Excuse me, Miss Nilf. Windsor wouldn't have died from no 50 orcs. As sure as Thelzamar blood sausage is the tastiest food the world may ever know. There he stood. He was covered in orc chunks from head to toe, drenched in about 18 layers of their blood, but he was definitely alive and really, really angry. So how did he die? Why do you keep saying he died? Who told you he died? I never said he died. He went missing is all. You see, apparently we had gotten into the middle of some big orc versus dark eye and dwarf battle. The orcs, being the miserable filthy curs that they are, we're out early, setting up some traps and other diabolical things you probably wouldn't understand. I don't know, buddy. I'm very intimately familiar with traps. Okay, so where the hell is he? Wait a minute. Are you drunk? <laughs> Dwarves don't get drunk, Missy. I'm just a little sloppy. Anyhow, Windsor, I figure he's somewhere in Blackrock Depths. That's the Dark Iron City for you un uneducated peoples. Wait, why is he in Blackrock Depths? Where, where did this come from? Slow down, I was getting to that. So there he was, standing tall with all the blood and guts dripping off him, when who shows up? The Dark Irons. Didn't you hear a word I said? Well, the Dark Irons are a little craftier than those Black Rock Orcs. They came prepared, and by prepared I mean there were about 300 of them. <gasps> Excuse me. 300, so the Dark Irons killed him and dragged him into the depths? <sighs> Missy, if I didn't know better, I'd think you were one of them special peoples. We call them trogs. Not right. Windsor didn't have no beef with the Dark Irons. After all, his great-great-grandpappy's best friend was a Dark Iron, which is also probably why that army of Dark Irons didn't kill him on sight. The Iron Bow. Finally, put some fingers in your ears. Your brain might have just grown five sizes, and I'm worried it might leak out. So the Dark Irons spared his life and took him prisoner. Their leader, some self-important uppity fella named Thoris, Thoris something, took Iron Foe for himself. And that was the last I saw of old Windsor. <laughs> Excuse me. Thanks, Ragged John. Your story was very uplifting and informative. <sighs> you see what I mean by my character is saying dumb things all the time? Anyway, we're back at Morgan's Visual, turning in the, the prior quest, and here we are with Ogre Head on a Stick equals Party. This is a very easy quest. We just go up to the top of this here mountain, my mount can walk on the lava. It, it will walk on the lava where it does not get the treats. It, it puts its paws on the lava or it does not get the cat food. Now uh, these guys are ignoring me because they're running in fear. My friend ran up ahead of me and got the quest done. Here we are at the top and uh, there's some th there are some strange remains here but they do not appear to be for anything that we have to do. We just uh, lop the ogre head on the pike here. It's a bit flashy. And then all, all the ogres start running in fear all over the place because their leader is dead and that's why they ignored me earlier. They were in too much of a panic to realize that there was a small sneaky night elf running up to do the very same thing. It's an infinite loop of, uh, of shenanigans. Now our last quest that we gotta do in here for now is to uh, to get the Broodling Essence. That's the Scattershot glitch that caused Scattershot not to work. And I might have gotten the quest item if I had actually gotten the Scatter to work there. We cannot use it on a dead target. So... Our, it's not our warrior's fault. I would have had that done. I, I calculated it to have it done. If, if only the scattershot actually worked properly, but you know, blizzard scripting, what the f can you do? Excuse my French. Anyway. So, uh, we're going on with murdering all the broodlings, and we've got to poke them with our arcane bolt shadow smoke thing. 
before we kill them. And it's as simple as that. This quest is one of those quests that take uh, twice as long if you have a party member with you, but we're gonna make it pretty quick. It, it just spawns these here gems atop the, the whelps, which we do need to loot after killing the whelps. We gotta, we gotta use this. We cannot forget to use it on every single thing. And as long as the, the shadowy smoke is on a whelp, then we know it is afflicted with the thing that will spawn our quest item. Here's another broodling. It's uh, out by this here dark iron deposit, or whatever that is. The whelps are all kind of spread out. So there was a lot of walking during this quest. Probably could have done it earlier during our first uh, dragon slaying quest, the dragonkin menace. But it's whatever, honestly. Uh, more, more XP is good. We grind a little bit more, get up there a little bit better. And uh, all, all is well. And you know, if we weren't grinding these guys, then we would never have seen that blue. Which just dropped on the last one. That, so that was, that was welcome, that was good. There should be some more whelps around here. Or there, there would be if they had not been killed. Here's, here's, here's one more. They, there are a couple out here that we can still kill. There are a couple that are still alive. I am being interrupted and my warrior friend does not notice that there is not shadowy smoke, so we missed that one. But this one we certainly do get. We can fit the, the cast time between the auto swings. I just didn't get the opportunity at that time or I didn't, I, I wasn't good with my timing there. Anyway, there is one bigger dragon that we have to kill during this quest. Not for the quest itself, but because there is a treasure chest right next to it, which I have noticed with my keen eyes. My eagle eyes. It turns out that these casters are actually not at all very dangerous. We just do our normal rot rotation on them, our normal ranged rotation. And with our good old Bloodseeker, we can kill it dead. I, didn't, I did not send my pet in here because I'm worried that it might, say, pull another elite or something. We don't need it, it's fine. Now I can loot this here chest, and we'll see what it has a, what, what it has in store for us. Nothing useful. I mean, sure, a couple of mana potions, but uh, n nothing, nothing like a green. Now that we're back to the whelps, we, uh, we can fit the cast time for the quest item between their casts. Your casts a fireball. Or simply run in on them while Rapture initiates, but either way, this quest is a massive pain for hunters. I don't like going so close so early. It's uh it, it's a little bit backwards. It's counterintuitive. Thankfully we are just about done. We only have a couple more to kill. Just a couple more, or I do anyway. Our warrior friend is finishing elsewhere. We have split up because because of how this quest works. There is a drake coming my way, but I'll do what I can to dish out as much damage as possible, finish that broodling off. Before it pulls, we're safe, okay. Here's another whelpling at Slither Rock. I can interrupt it with my, uh, my scatter shot. Oh, ah. Uh. He interrupted me with an auto attack. That is kind of BS, isn't it? I have I have interrupted him yet again with a nice little freezing trap. He just needs to chill out, bro. And that's the last one. But uh, before we go back to the quest giver, there was a little something funny that happened along the way. So I do wanna I do wanna just meme around for a little bit. I thought that this guy saw me and was coming straight for me, but it turns out that he passed right by me. Strangely enough, I was I was very puzzled by that. Uh, and then I noticed that there was a drake coming right up behind me, so I had to step over here. But it turns out that he actually does want some trouble. So I'm going to try to lead him back to my trap, but he obviously sees it. He's trying to keep away from me, so given that he's not going to trip it, I simply scattershot him and run. We're gonna try and use the terrain here and some, some Shadow Meld exploitation to try and evade him because this this is what it's like to not have an invisibility potion. You can't juke anyone, you have to Shadow Meld where you want. And there's Batching, he passed right over the trap. He's coming after me. 
My trap is off cooldown though, so I, I just drop another one. And now we'll do the exact same thing. We are very low in HP though, so that's uh, that's certainly not good for us. But we'll be okay as long as we survive. This this here tree looks like a nice place to hide behind. Oh, but there's another Horty who comes by. Hello there. Oh no, no, please not right now. Oh, she she polymorphed me to heal me up. She's trying to heal me. It's very kind of you, but now is not the time. I'm afraid. I did have a trap down there, but this the shaman was smart and decided to actually, uh, you know, use a lightning bolt to try and finish me off in addition to a shock. But it's it's a little bit too late for that. He probably should get used to I don't know using a grounding totem to eat the freezing trap. He'll 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 just learn that the hard way through this experience. We have uh, we have chosen this this inconspicuous ridge to hide behind this time, and it looks like he's he's gonna pass right by us again. Oh, nope. Yep, yep. He's uh he's leaving us alone, or he he cannot find us anymore. <sighs> Life without invisibility potions. This is why you always keep them on you because if you wanna just do your questing thing. You can get back to it easily. You literally just... Shadow meld somewhere. Invis pot, go somewhere else, and there you go. They, they go in co some completely opposite direction from where you want to go and leave you alone completely. Without an invisibility potion, they kind of pursue you, and you just kind of have to do that until you get lucky and uh, evade them completely. Anyway... That about wraps it up in the burning steps for today, or actually in its entirety. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I'm glad to finally be back from my holiday break, back to putting stuff out there, so I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. If you did, don't forget to drop a like down below to show me. If you haven't already, it would help me out immensely if you were to subscribe and click that bell icon for notifications so you never miss a new upload. I love bringing new content to you guys, so I hope you love seeing it just as much. Check the description for a skip list and more links as usual. Be sure to be here for the next one. We'll be leveling up in Ungaro where I tackle Simone at level 56, and what an interesting kite it was. As always, I will see you at that time. Bye bye!